The Aventury Avenger is a gun that has been all over forums, um, all over the internet, all over YouTube, and seems to have taken a lot of people by surprise because of what you're getting for the price. And those of you have, who have followed my channel for a while will know that I have generally stuck to sort of the higher end um, PCPs when it comes to reviews. Um, I've done a lot of different brands in the past, um, obviously FX, Air Arms, done a Day State, I've done Caliber Gun, uh, done, well, I will be doing a PTE from the Netherlands, um, done a lot of guns, but I've never really ventured into the entry-level PCP market. And the reason for that is, it's probably just because I'm, I'm a little bit spoiled. I know that sounds like a terrible thing to say, but when I started out my journey with PCPs, I wanted to do things right, and I saved up a lot of money for a long time, for probably three years, um, before I could buy an Air Arms S510, which back then was like one of the best guns you could get. Um, and from there, it's, all, it's always been, you know, up there at that level. I know that I'm in a different boat to a lot of people. Um, I'm obviously in a, a privileged position where since the day I bought that first PCP, people have been wanting to offer me guns to review and test and use all the time on my channel. And so I've obviously bought my own guns along the way, but I've never felt the need to go for an entry level gun. This time I'm looking at this gun out of a service to you guys, because I know that many of you don't want to just fork out cash for something really expensive if you're just starting out with PCPs or just if you can't afford a high-end PCP in general. Some people don't need one. Some people don't need that extra tiny, tiny bit of accuracy and um, efficiency and precision that you get from paying double. It's just not necessary to most people. Let's just clear the air with something straight off the bat. If anyone's told you that this is going to be able to do what a very high-end PCP like an impact will do, forget it. It's just, it's not in the same league. Um, it's got a hollow plastic stock. It's not attached to the stock extremely well. It's, the whole action here is plastic. Um, if you use the magazine, you're gonna lose a bit of accuracy because the pellets clip a bit. There's a whole lot, lot of things that make this gun imperfect and paying more will sort out a lot of those issues. However, for what you pay for this gun, it's pretty amazing what it can do. And there are ways to sort out some of the issues, which I will speak about later. Um, let's, let's give a quick overview of the setup, and then I'm gonna start talking about some of the things that surprised me and some of the really nice features of this gun. So a quick overview. Um, this is a more traditional looking rifle. It's not a bullpup. There's no fancy folding stock, anything like that. Like that. It's a normal traditional PCP like you would have found as the standard 15 years ago. Um, as I mentioned, the stock is hollow. I'd say it's one of the things that I don't like about this gun, but it seems to work. And if you really want to spend some money and fill it with high density foam or epoxy it, you know, bed it properly, that'll probably help with that issue and negate that issue. Um, but it works and I can't complain about it for the price. One of the main things about this gun is that it has an externally adjustable regulator and a hammer spring adjuster. Now, Aventuri, which is very closely related to Pyramid Air, put a lot of time and effort into making sure that this gun could give you a lot of the features that high-end PCPs can do. So there is an externally adjustable regulator here, which is something that's relatively new. Um, you can adjust this from the outside and that allows you to go from extremely low power. Let's say you want to shoot like six foot rounds or something and you want to do a little bit of pest control in your backyard. If you've got some rats to shoot or something, you can turn the power all the way down by lowering the rig pressure and adjusting the hammer spring down. Or you can put the rig pressure really high up to like over 200 bar, which is very, very high. And it's not always a positive thing. Sometimes using much lower rig pressures is, is better, but the high rig pressure in this gun does have its benefits as well. And I'll get to that a bit later. High rig pressure, hammer spring up, and you can get quite a bit of power at this gun. And a few years ago, a lot of power, like anything over 32 foot pounds in a 22 cal PCP would be a negative thing because you're pushing those pellets at too high a speed, they're gonna lose accuracy. But with slugs coming to the market, like these 23 grain javelin slugs, FX hybrid slugs, and many others, 
you're going to be able to shoot slugs out of this gun now at over 40 foot pounds and it can do it accurately which is something i have to see to believe because most barrels do not shoot slugs accurately straight out the box consistently you know every single gun but i've seen time and time again that the avenger is able to deal with slugs and pellets put them out at a decent power flat shot string with the regulator um, and that to me is quite impressive so we'll go through accuracy characteristics of the slugs later and maybe shoot some pellets too but i've got this gun set up currently at 43 foot pounds which is really nice let's talk about the barrel you know i mentioned it shoots slugs what barrel is in here now most of the time and historically if a barrel was not from one of the following manufacturers lothar walther fx bsa cz and there's maybe one or two others but more in the like 10 meter slash field target world slash bench rest world if it's not from one of those manufacturers you don't take it seriously you know a barrel out of china the chinese aren't allowed to shoot air guns so why would you trust them to make a good barrel how do they know what standard is supposed to be good however as i mentioned um evan churi has spent a lot of time making sure this gun is up to standard worked on the trigger worked on a whole lot of things and they have made sure that the quality control of this barrel is um is able to i won't say compete head to head with some of the very high end barrel manufacturers but really push the limits of what you can get out of the far east in terms of barrels and i was blown away that a chinese barrel that doesn't look like it's been crowned at all it's just like looks like it's been sawn off at the end i've been amazed that that's been able to um, do what it can do and i'll show you that a bit later the barrel is fully shrouded so it's going to be fairly quiet a big weakness with this barrel is that the standard shroud that goes over the barrel it's just a piece of plastic there's nothing that holds the barrel in place in here and because the action is plastic the barrel is not held very tightly either so while myself and Gerard and Rule from Air Hunters were testing this gun thoroughly because obviously we work with Patriot Outdoors who imports these guns to South Africa we noticed that there were some pretty crazy point of impact shifts it would shoot very accurately and then the next you know a few shots later it would be pointing in a totally different direction we have managed to fix that by fitting a Donny FL um, adapter on the end which is actually made as a silence adapter so you can you know thread on um, any half inch UNF silence on the end which helps a lot makes it nice and quiet however it also performs the function of holding the barrel in place because there's a barrel band the shroud is quite secure and so the shroud is actually able to hold that barrel quite nicely um, and since I've put this adapter on there have been no more point of impact picture so this adapter will be available from or is available from Patriot Outdoors and I believe they might be doing some package deals where you can buy both of these together and that should sort out that issue you do have two manometers over here one of them gives you your regular pressure and the other one gives you your fill pressure now at a price point like this anyone else probably would have skimped and said uh, we don't need to see the reg pressure you only need one manometer it's just an extra cost nope eventually made sure that that was on there so that's fantastic and then to fill this gun and it can fill to 300 bar which is great you just plonk a normal foster connector on the end which most people have if you own a pcp and if you don't own a pcp it's the standard connect that comes with a full a full adapter kit fits straight on there and you can fill your gun from there magazine i've got the single shot tray in here because we found that you get better accuracy with a single shot tray than you do with a magazine the magazine tends to clip and you don't get the same level of precision however there is a 10 shot magazine included um, which you can obviously use if you want and you get about two maybe one and a half full magazines when shooting slugs at 43 foot pounds which I think is not bad considering this is a very small 180cc air cylinder. Safety at the back, I'll never use it. Um, if I want my gun to be safe, I'll decock it, <laughs> but it's there if you want it. And a nice side lever, which actually comes quite far down, which I like because I've got used to just 
keeping my hand in this position and cocking like this and that side lever coming down allows you to do that quite quickly. It is a plastic cocking lever and it does feel like it's straining a little bit when you um, have the hammer spring set at a pretty high level like I've got for the slugs. However, it hasn't broken yet and we've really tried hard to do everything we can to break it, so that's great. One of the things that, that I noticed straight away that was nowhere near as good as the high-end PCPs is the trigger. It's quite difficult to pull um, and it's a bit, uh, what's the word, like it's not very crisp. However, compare it to most springers that cost similar money and um, most PCPs that cost significantly more than this and it's actually not bad at all for what you're paying for it. Um, it will affect your, your ability to shoot good groups a little bit but I think most people are going to be using this as a, as a hunting setup anyway. I, th I don't think you're going to buy this to compete in 100 yard bench to field target. So I don't think it's too much of a, of a letdown considering the purpose. One of the things I like about this gun is there's a, a hole here for a, for a sling at the back and at the front. So you can sling this over your shoulder if you want. And there's a built-in pick rail. Now it's a, it's a plastic pick rail so it's a little bit loose. However, you're not going to put a AccuTac or Atlas bipod on this unless you really own it. You know, the bipod itself costs almost as much as the gun. Um, so I've actually put a, a UTG bipod on here which um, I've never used one before this, but I was quite impressed for what you get for the money. Everyone knows that although the Atlases and Accutacs are really, really nice, they are also overpriced. Whereas this one, it kind of does everything the others do, maybe not quite as good. There's a bit of flex, but it is a great job and it's got a, a locking lever, which I really like. So you can set your, your cant and your, you know, all, the, all your flex and you can lock it down uh, when, you've, when you've got it where you want it and that, that does help a lot. So that's fantastic. Picatinny rail on top here and a dovetail rail. I don't know if I would recommend using a dovetail rail simply because this block is plastic and these the pieces that your dovetail mounts would grip onto are very very small. You would need a dovetail rail that's very long in order to get a good bite into this. So if you can get Picatinny rings I would strongly suggest that. It's still not perfect it's still just plastic however it's much better than than the dovetail on this particular setup and I would definitely go for that. I fitted a Element Helix on top here um, I think it's a pretty good match for this gun. It's decent size, you're getting that magnification you need, you can focus down to 10 yards and it's relatively inexpensive as well. Good match for the setup. The crazy thing is that this gun has shot slugs more reliably than any Lothar Walther barrel I've tested. Now Lothar Walther barrels, from experience, just because of some of the design features of them, which I'm not going to share with you because that's kind of secret information that I hold to myself. The Lothar Walther barrels, some of them shoot slugs brilliantly and others off the same production line, same batch, are useless. And there are some reasons for that. But this gun, with this barrel, and I knew the moment I pushed a slug through here and actually looked at it, has a design that is going to work very well with 217 and 218 slugs. Um, I've had better results with the 218 javelins um, than the 217 javelins, uh, 23 grand, I wouldn't go heavier than 23, but you should probably test both sizes just to see what your barrel likes more. You will also probably gain a bit of velocity from the 217, so if you can shoot the 217s then that's a good way to go. I mentioned earlier that um, there is a benefit to having high rig pressure. The downside of the high rig pressure is that the gun can potentially be more violent to shoot and you also get a lot less or a lot fewer shots per fill, especially if you only have let's say a 230 bar air tank. You're going to only be able to fill this to 230 bar and then let's say your rig is at 200, you're only going to get 30 bars worth of shots, you're not going to get many shots per fill. However, the upside of, of the high rig pressure, and I think it's the reason they did this, is that in order to achieve the same muzzle velocity, you can have a shorter burst of air. Shorter burst of air at a high pressure can give you the same result as a long burst of air at low pressure. And that short burst of air, generally speaking, means that your valve is going to close 
long before the pellet or slug is at the end of the barrel. This, in my experience, keeps the gun a little bit quieter because you have less, ca less air coming out the muzzle behind the pellet or slug. It's a shorter sound, it's like a, I'm just gonna sound weird, it's like a instead of a ch I don't know if that came through at all, but um, if you've played around with an adjustable, a gun with an adjustable rig, you'll know what I'm talking about, that short burst of air versus the long sort of push, where you're pushing a, a slug through the barrel. In a shorter barrel like this, that short burst of air helps a lot to get accuracy out of a short barrel. If you had a much lower rig pressure, let's say 130 bar, and you had the same barrel length, and you were trying to push the slug at, at 43 foot-pounds, it's very likely that you would you would see you would have some accuracy issues because of that air behind the slug or pellet as it leaves the barrel. So that actually helps with accuracy. The downside, as I mentioned, though, trying to pump this gun to 300 bar with a hand pump, forget it. Trying to buy a 300 bar air tank, you're going to pay more money. So think carefully before you buy this as a dedicated slug setup, unless you can afford the 300 bar tank, or unless you can, unless you're very muscular and willing to pump the heck out of uh, that air pump to get that, that high pressure. Otherwise, you're not going to get many shots before. Well, we have come out to the Port Elizabeth Air Rifle Club, which is my local club. It's actually really nice to have a spot that's dedicated for air gunners where I don't have to wear hearing protection, where it's relatively quiet during the week. Um, just come on, do some testing. We've got really good weather today. Um, it's probably maybe two mile an hour wind. It's really not much. I've got no excuses. And we're going to do a series of tests. I have just filled this gun to 300 bar. I'm actually using the Aventuri Nomad portable compressor. I uh, attached it to the battery on my truck. Um, timed how long it took to fill from 250 to 300 bar, which obviously isn't a normal circumstance. Normally you'd fill from less than that, maybe 200 or 180 bar, depending on where your rig is set. Um, but I timed it, it took about two minutes to fill from 250 to 300. So I would guess from like 180 to 300, it'd probably take four to five minutes. Now that it's 300 bar, the first thing I'm gonna do is connect the FX radar chronograph and do a full shot string with the slugs just to see how many shots per fill we can get from the slugs. Um, normally you would want to use uh, pellets if you wanna get the best shot count, but I think a lot of people want an affordable slug gun. So that's what we're gonna to test today. So I've got the 23 grand Patriot Javelin slugs, 218 caliber. And um, after we've done the shot string, we'll shoot at 50 and possibly even 100. I've actually tuned the gun down a bit from the 43 foot pounds it was at, put the rig down a bit, um, tuned it to around 33 foot pounds. So that'll allow us to shoot both pellets and slugs during the accuracy test. Um, but let's see how many shots we can get. I've got the 10 shot magazine in and check the consistency and everything, and then we will go on to accuracy testing. 821. 810. <laughs> That's crazy. I think we've just dropped off the reg now. But what, what's that? Shot count, 60. 60 shots. 60 shots at 33 foot pounds from a little tiny cylinder like this. I tell you what, my first air gun, my Air Arms S510, which was really good back in the day, I think I got 15 to 20 good shots. Obviously it was unregulated, but 15 to 20 good shots at the same muzzle energy before I had to refill. So just shows what a rig and the ability to fine tune can actually do makes a massive difference. And I can hear when I take shots of this gun, it's not uh, it's not wasting air, there's no hammer bounce, none of that. I can hear it's actually tuned pretty well. So, very impressed with that. But, on to some accuracy. Okay, uh, wind is starting to pick up, so let's not waste any time. Taking the magazine out. I'm gonna be single loading to get the best possible chance of good accuracy. I'm gonna start off with the 23 grain Patriot Javelin slugs, and then we'll shoot the hybrids, and then we'll shoot the JSBs. And, Depending on what the wind does, we will probably take the best one of those three out to 100 and just shoot a group at 100. Scope cam is mounted a little bit skew, unfortunately, thanks to the, the screw on the side of the, um, 
uh, scope mounts, but anyway, let's make do with what we have. I'm going to start off with the large target at the bottom. Okay, that's five shots with the javelins. Let's go on to five shots with the hybrids. Looks pretty good. It's hard to see on, the, on that cardboard, but we'll take some close-ups a little bit later. So that's the hybrids. Now let's do the JSPs. Oh, and the one flyer. That was such a tight group until right at the end there. Wow. So it looks like the hybrids were the best out of the three. And the pellets would have been on par with the hybrids, but that flyer threw it off quite fast. I don't know whether to disregard the flyer or keep it part of the group, but I guess we have to keep it part of the group. I think we should do the hybrids at 100. And maybe the javelins as well, just out of curiosity. Pellets may be shooting a little bit too fast right now. They're probably 950 or so. But I'm not going to change settings. I think I want to show this gun um, as a slug gun, which I think it's very capable of doing, as you can see. So let's put it out to 100 and shoot the hybrids and the javelins. 100 yards. Dead center. Hmm. Not bad. Okay. I think the hybrids just outshot the javelins there. You know what? Let's just shoot pellets. Just to see what will happen. Five shots, 16 grain JSBs. Let's go take a look. Okay, results at 100 yards. First group I shot was this one over here on the larger target. That was the uh, FX hybrid slugs. I would say that's just under two MOA, probably just under two inches. So I'm pretty happy with that considering that we've got some wind here today, um, considering that we didn't take time to fine tune for the slugs and considering the price point, that's very good. Javelin slugs, I would say that's probably ever so slightly bigger than the hybrids but keep in mind they also cost significantly less so that's something that you're gonna have to decide um, normally with a, a higher end gun people don't mind paying a bit more for the ammunition but keeping in mind this is a budget PCP you're gonna to want to factor in the cost of ammunition also pellets they did not fare well I think part of it is that the wind picked up but this is a real world uh, review in real world conditions this is a mild day in terms of wind very mild and if you're trying to shoot at 100 you are going to be affected by the wind if you're trying to shoot pellets so let's factor that in I think on a calm day the pellets might have done better but they were all over the place there's three shots up there there was one that that went down here in the middle of nowhere and there was one that actually hit just up there so that's like it's like a five to six inch group at 100 it's terrible could probably get it slightly better with some tuning but not much i think this is mostly just wind pushing it about and they're just too light so happy with that what do you gain from a gun that costs twice as much let's say an fx dreamline which would probably be the next step up you're going to get 
slightly better groups at 100. Um, you're going to have a setup that's that doesn't shift as much in terms of point of impact. This has a lot of plastic parts and the stock is a bit loose and you will get slight point of impact shifts. You're gonna get a better trigger. This trigger is adjustable um, for you know, the sears adjustable length of pull and trigger pull weight. So technically on paper, the same as like a Dreamline trigger, but there's no comparison. The Dreamline trigger feels much better and most more expensive triggers will feel better. Smoother cocking and obviously it's gonna look better. Um, so those are just things to factor in, but I will say this. If you're shooting either of these two slugs, javelins or hybrids at 100, you're gonna hit a pigeon five times out of five. So is it worth paying more to tighten up that group by a few millimeters? That's up to you. <laughs> you're giving a large market who can't afford high-end PCPs something to work with that will keep them excited about PCPs, will will make them feel like they can be part of something else. You know what? You know this thing that that guys with high-end PCPs talk about, where you know they're getting this efficiency. They got this flat shot string. They're able to shoot slugs. Um, they talk about their regulator and adjusting the regulator. If you can't afford those high-end guns, you can't be part of the community, or you feel like you can't be part of the community. This gives those people something to to, to use, and. Obviously, at a later stage, if they want to upgrade, they can. But this is a fantastic stepping stone, and I would highly recommend taking a look at this if you want to get into PCPs, but you don't have the budget for spending the big money. If you have a choice between a Springer and this, I would go for this. If you're in South Africa, you can take a look at Patriot Outdoors, um, who are importing the Avenger and a lot of other Aventuri products. The compressors and other things like that so if you want stuff to go with this full adapters and everything they've kind of got everything you need out there if you want to start getting into pcps and then obviously in the us permit air sells these guys um and i believe they're selling a boatload of them which says a lot about how good they are i'm looking forward to seeing in the comments what you think about this gun especially guys who who um who've actually owned this um i think it's great and i'm i'm looking forward to seeing where the, the air gun market goes. We have some crazy expensive guns on the market right now, but we also have stuff like this, which is giving you high-end features at lower prices. So I think, I think the sport is only gonna grow from here and keen to see where that takes us. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you next time.